Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. I am very excited today because we are jumping into Gemini season, you got Oh, and my little Gemini. <laughs> hey buddy, you wanna talk to everyone? I'm gonna act like he doesn't do this in every video and act like he's just doing it because it's his season now. This is my little Gemini baby. Um, so obviously he's very excited. I'm sure any other Gemini babies out there are excited as well. And I am very excited just to talk to you guys today about this awesome sign because this is one that I personally do not have like really any of in my chart. So it's quite foreign energy to me, which is just all the more exciting and fun because it's like, this is not me, where am I? And so for me, that was very exciting when like putting all this information together for you guys and really thinking about how I might want to kind of vibe this Gemini season. So as with every video in this series, I will start out with a bit of an intro, a little bit about the sign of Gemini, why you should embrace it, how to find it in your chart, what that maybe means, um, symbolism, colors, and then I will bring you a huge list of ideas to do, rituals, just fun thoughts and ideas you can do this season to kind of feel into that energy. If you have a ton in your chart, then it'll be really nice to just kind of be yourself and, you know, get more in tune with your sign. And if you don't have a lot in your like me, then it'll be really fun for you to explore and, you know, just kind of go outside of your box a bit. Um, and then of course we'll end with an oracle reading for the collective to see what we need to hear this Gemini season. So if you're here, then I'm excited because you're probably excited too. So make sure to like this video, share it with all your witchy friends and subscribe and let's go ahead and just get started. So let's answer the main first question. What is the importance of feeling the Gemini energy? Like why should we, you know, try to do these things during this specific time? And you probably have a good idea if you're here, you're probably pretty into astrology, but I believe that it is really, really beneficial for us to take the time dedicated to the 12 signs of the zodiac and really lean into those attributes and traits regardless of where that is or how much we have, because it gives us a chance to expand ourselves, get life from a different perspective, which will help us gain empathy for other people, um, maybe gain empathy for a couple of signs, because I know a lot of people <laughs> have like weird discrepancies against certain signs, so it gives us some empathy with that. It also allows us time to really do shadow work on specific specific things, feel our feelings, and like we're already, whether you believe in astrology or not, it has that effect and like that energy will be here um, regardless of if you want to lean into it or not. And so leaning into it is a bit harmonious because those are already some of the things that might be coming up in your life already and it might just be a good chance to kind of embrace those things. Which brings me to my next point. So like, you might be like, okay, well then why do we not all have the exact same month during Gemini season? And that's a great question because Gemini affects us each differently. And the way to see how it affects you is by looking at your birth chart. So if you don't know how to do this, you can just go to astro.com, enter your information and you'll get your wheel. Now, please, <laughs> please avoid CoStar. I don't mean to be a hater. Um, CoStar and I'm sure many other astrology apps, which I used to have CoStar back in my day, um, they don't give you your chart and it'll look like you're missing certain houses. And also I don't know what house system they use, but it's weird. It's just really hard and it won't be beneficial for this. You wanna see the wheel, it'll be a circle, it'll be a pie in 12 pieces. So you can then find where Gemini sits in your chart and it depends where you're I don't want to get too in depth. This might be confusing. I'm not going to explain all the way the chart is laid out. If you want to learn more, you can get an astrology reading with me. Link is in the, in the description, but that's not necessary. Um, just check out where Gemini is in your chart. You'll see numbers and you can also use Cafe Astrology and they'll tell you specifically which house um, Gemini is. So Gemini does rule the third house and you might not have Gemini in your third house. Um, I have Gemini in my second house. And looking at which house your Gemini lives will tell you what themes might come up. So for example, let me put my life out there like every single video. I have Gemini in my second house. So this is kind of exciting because that's the house of finances. It's ruled by Taurus. Um, so lots of like stability, wealth, uh, money, um, 
you know, finances, that kind of stuff will be a big topic for me this season. Um, and with Gemini, I can kind of put those two together and understand that Gemini is a sign all about communications and um, intelligence. And so I can think, okay, if, you know, wealth and finance is going to be a big theme this month, how can I make that really harmonious with Gemini? So maybe like collaborating with people or maybe um, writing or talking, which I already do. I, communication is like my job. <laughs> but, you know, those things might be more prosperous this month than others. And also that just might help me grow um, in a less material way and more of an emotional wealth kind of way. So that's just like one interpretation. Um, so make sure because it can be anywhere in any of your 12 houses, you know, depending on which house it is in, um, those are some of the themes that'll come up. So once you've done that, if you wanna go extra ham, you can look at um, what's going on in your third house because Gemini is ruling that. And I know this is a lot. I'm trying not to overwhelm you. You can also look at what's going on in your third house ruled by Gemini and what's going on in, in wherever, whichever house Gemini is in. So say Gemini is in your 12th house. So look at your 12th and your third house, mm -hmm, if that makes sense. Another fun step you can do, you can also look at what's going on with your Mercury um, because Gemini is ruled by the planet Mercury. Um, so, you know, I have Mercury in Aries in my 12th house. So those are also some themes that might be coming up. So just a, a lot of little fun astrology tips that you can go into. I know that's a lot and I know Astrology is so confusing and it takes a lot of um, just getting familiar with it for it to not overwhelm you. So I'm sorry if that was overwhelming, um, but you know, feel free to ask me questions in the comment if, if that wasn't clear. <laughs> Gemini season is May 21st to June 20th. So a good month, a good time, a uh, middle of summer to really get into that energy. Um, so if you're wanting to plan things um, or schedule tarot readings or do some journaling prompts throughout this month, then, um, then yeah, that's, that's the time. <laughs> so let's talk about Gemini a bit more. So they are an air sign. So this is exciting because we are getting into our first air sign of the new ast astrological year. So we always start with Aries, then we go to Taurus, and now we are in the first air sign. So this is the time to really get in your head and to think and to just flow, not in the water sense, more in like, um, uh, not too much feeling, not too much feeling. Just vibing, just going with the flow in a in a flowy wind sort of way. Um, intelligence, learning stuff, really working your brain. Um, you know, all that kind of good stuff is just like big air energy. And so each sign also is connected to a modality. And so Gemini is a mutable modality. So this means that they're very adaptable. Again, kind of that going with the flow of things. Um, really liking to like travel and adventure and, you know, rather than, you know, being fixed um, or cardinal, they are, you know, they're not wanting, because we just, we had our Aries, which was cardinal and our Taurus, which was fixed. So we have been stern, we have been in place, we have been, you know, a bit stubborn, and now is the time to absolutely let loose and let your wings fly and, you know, go out and do the shit, you guys. It's summer, dude. You know what I mean? Gemini, being ruled by Mercury, is a learner, a communicator, intelligence, um, you know, writing. Really, words are something that Gemini love, so they might love to write. Um, just speaking, they love talking, they're so talkative. Um, and, you know, being in the moment and like doing the stuff. Um, they love being in social groups, they're such social creatures. Um, they love the attention. And um, so this is such a time to have fun and to be more active. Um, and I'll, I'll talk in a second about how that kind of connects to Taurus, but let me first talk about the colors. So I always like to attribute some colors to the sign so that we can think about that when working with our glamour magic. If you're someone who wants to do makeup or fashion magic, um, or even just decorate your house, get some flowers that kind of correspond with the sign's colors. For me, and this is totally up to you to kind of interpret what you feel like Gemini looks like to you, um, I think the pretty uh, well-recognized colors for Gemini are grays, greens, and yellows. Um, so those are great colors, and those are also kind of attributed to Mercury. Uh, Wednesday is the day that's ruled by Mercury. That's just a fun, fun fact. I personally, when I think of Gemini, um, I do see gray and green and um, yellow, but I really see black and white, okay? 
And this might be um, because they are, I don't know if I told you any of the symbolism, I totally didn't, but they are the twins, okay? You probably know this. Some people are like, Jim, are so two-faced. They are so two-faced. And like, chill out, it's fine. They just know how to adapt their, mut their mutable signs. They know how to chameleon their way into the social group so people like them. I think that's pretty chill. So I wonder if that's where my black and white color scheme comes from. I think when I think of Gemini art, I think of just dark contrast. Um, and so that's, that's my personal um, adaptation of what Gemini looks like to me. So when looking at, I always, before we move on to our little rituals and whatnot, I like to talk about how we can reflect on our previous season, how that one moment, please. Hello. Hi. Hey, mama. I'm good. I'm filming a YouTube video right now, so you'll be in. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this clip in. <laughs> As I was saying, I always like to connect the previous sign to what we're experiencing now. So looking back at Taurus, we can see that we were kind of in this like hibernation, you know, getting into our groundedness and kind of just indulging a bit after such fiery Aries energy, really just taking the time to be connected with the energy and what delights us and what feels good um, and to maybe be a bit reclusive. So the main difference that we're gonna see is that with Jim and I, we are going to want to be so much more social and I am already feeling it. Um, we're gonna wanna go out, we're gonna wanna express ourselves and be the life of the party, um, which might be a little bit foreign to you. Um, it definitely usually is to me, but I can already feel it, I'm very excited. So you might find yourself wanting to be more talkative, wanting to express yourself more via you know, writing or words or speaking, um, and just wanting to spend more time with friends, which I think is really good because I think a lot of us might have gotten into this like weird reclusive habit for the past month. So it's really gonna be nice to break out of that and to experience the world. And it's summertime, it's the beginning of summer, it's the perfect time to do that. So let's start with the rituals of how to bring Gemini energy into your daily life this Gemini season. So the first one I want to talk about is simply have a party and that can look like whatever you want it to look like, whatever is comfortable for you. Um, but like I said, this is the time to get out of your shell and to connect with your friends and family and the loved ones once again and to really just have a good time. You know, and especially if you're an introvert, just really try to take this opportunity to kind of break out of your shell and experience the life of an extrovert just a little bit. My second idea is to take a mini vacation or adventure. And this can look like, again, however it needs to for you, for your budget, for your abilities. Um, there's no pressure. You can literally just adventure to a new, spot, a new spot in like the garden or a park nearby or adventure to a new coffee shop or store you've never been to. Or you can literally take like an adventure and like, you know, go to some woods you haven't been to before or take a vacation. Um, traveling and experiencing new things and adventuring are all really big parts of Gemini energy. And so really leaning into that travel and that, um, you know, just like youthfulness and excitement of um, the world, you know, it's a really big thing for Gemini's. My next idea is to learn something new. Take this time to immerse yourself into something that either maybe you're really interested in or maybe it's something that you really don't know anything about and um, you know, taking this time to really become the scholar and that's a really big thing with Gemini's. They are the learners. Um, they're not so much bookworms like Tauruses where they'll wanna curl up with a book they're more so wanting to learn things and implement them into action. Um, so, you know, reading is still good, but it's more so about that new gaining of information. Something that's maybe more exciting for Gemini's rather than reading a book would be taking a course, um, doing like an e-course or something about something really interesting. Um, and even for people who maybe don't wanna spend a whole lot of money this month, you can literally just like look on YouTube. There, YouTube is filled with so many free, like lessons and um, you know things to learn from. So you can really go ahead and like dive into those free resources as well. I think I will be doing, um, I don't know, I think YouTube and like eBooks are gonna be my like learning. As I said before, Gemini is ruled by the planet Mercury, making them excellent communicators and very intellectual. So this makes them very, very good writers and communicators. So this is a really good time to go ahead and dive into that writing side that you have. 
Whether or not you think of yourself as a good writer, it doesn't really matter. This is just a great way to get your feelings out on paper and to create something. And this is such Gemini energy. So if you are up for it, I would challenge you to write some poetry this month. Do some, you know, prompts or something that gets you writing. Um, write a short story, literally just journal. But I think creative writing is really, really good um, for Gemini energy and for really getting in tune with that because it works your brain, um, it allows you to communicate a story, and it's just, it's filled with Mercury and Gemini energy, which I think is beautiful. I will continue with one of my favorite sections of this video, which is the crystals. So I always recommend that maybe you try to meditate or carry these crystals with you um, because they are specific to this sign's energy. Um, if you don't have the money or you don't have these crystals, you can go ahead and just meditate with the image of them. You can make them your um, computer background wallpaper, um, anything really like that. Um, so the first crystal that I want to talk about is agate. And so agate comes in so many different varieties. So um, there are like lots of different colors that you can kind of choose that speak to you and lots of different shapes as well. Agate is um, one of the Gemini May birthstones and it really helps you to connect to earth. Um, so it's a really great crystal for Gemini energy. <laughs> The next crystal is Howlite, and this is a really great crystal for balancing negative energies and um, just connects to that Gemini energy as well. I always think of it too because it kind of has the duality of color that I kind of mentioned before, um, but it also just helps Gemini's wildly constantly working brain to, um, you know, release any of the negative and allow only positive energy. Serpentine is another really, really good crystal for Gemini's, and this is more so with manifestation. And lastly, Chrysocolla is great for calming and positivity. Um, and so you don't need to buy any of these crystals. If you have them, that's great. You can carry them, meditate with them. Um, but like I said before, you can really just think about their image or the things they make you feel and whatnot. As always, I am including a playlist for this sign. So I will have my Gemini playlist linked in the description below. Every season I make a playlist based on the signs for, um, it's just a Spotify playlist of things I just think really, really, encapsulate the feeling and the personality behind the sign. So let me know how I did. I don't have a lot of Gemini, so I worked pretty hard on this one, hoping that it is perfect for all you Geminis out there and that it really does perfect that energy. My last ritual section will be on glamour magic. And so I always think it's really great to, um, I love glamour, I love fashion and makeup. So for me, this is a big thing. I always think about how I can really feel this season with my clothing and how I present myself and um, how I do my makeup, etc. So my first tip with Gemini Glamour Magic is to be adventurous. So today, I don't know, I don't know, it might not look crazy to you guys, but I'm not really big on, I guess recently, more so when I was, when I was younger, but I'm um, not really big on bright lipstick anymore. Um, and so I did this look, I was listening to Avril Lavigne, of course. <laughs> Um, and I was just like, wow, this is maybe a lot. <laughs> but then I was like, you know what? This is adventurous. This is the Gemini energy. And so it doesn't have to look like anything as long as it feels a bit adventurous and outside of the box for you, a bit foreign for what you usually do. Um, I think that's great. I also did a makeup look the other day and I thought I put it on. I was like, this is so Gemini. So I'll put a picture here. Um, I thought it really fit a Gemini vibe. Um, you can do this with your makeup, your hair, your outfit. Kind of just think about like, what's the twin opposite, if that makes sense, of your style. Like how can you take your polar opposite and like integrate it into your style and kind of see, you know, maybe you'll find that you really, really like something that you didn't think you'd like. You can also have a day um, where you go out and do something really fun and you get dressed up for it. Like maybe you're gonna go out with friends or go drinking or something, um, doing something social. Make it a point to have a bit of a ritualistic time getting ready and putting yourself together. I used to do this all the time. I would take two hours to get ready, which is crazy now. Um, but taking that time to really just um, get, get dressed up only to go out and socialize. I feel like that's very big with the Gemini spirit. That concludes all of my rituals and little tips for your day-to-day -day life in Gemini season. Let's go ahead and do the collective oracle reading and see what spirit has to say for all of us. Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and see what we have in store as the, as the collective for Gemini season 2021. So asking spirit and all of our spirit guides, 
for the greatest good. What should we know for this coming season? Gemini season 2021. What's going to be the vibe? What is the vibe of the new season? Alrighty, I'm going to go pull three cards. Intuition, calmness, insight with the amethyst card. We've got the waning crescent, acceptance, allowance, evolution. And we've got cauldron, cycles, alchemy, transmutation. Alrighty, let me actually just pull one more because usually I think I pull four. And then we got the Rado. Oh my gosh, this is my favorite rune. The Journey Rhythm Initiation. Awesome. Let me point these towards you guys. So a huge theme I think happening here is kind of a flowingness. Um, you know, we've got that, uh, you know, we've got cycles and alchemy, which is not necessarily flowy, but um, transformation, but we have acceptance, allowance, evolution, and we have intuition, calmness, and insight. So from these two specifically, I'm just getting a big like going with the flow energy. And this is, I think, like the vibes, the feelings, like this calming, this allowance, like, you know, we're uh, like trusting in the universe, allowing our spirit guides to, to guide us. And we have two cards that are all about transformation, right? We have the cauldron, which is where you, you know, put your potions together and you let them, you know, flame and do whatever. And then you've got the Rado rune, which is the rune of, of journey and transformation. So I'm really seeing like a new, and I, this is kind of funny because I got a very similar reading in my new moon spread, um, like this transformation um, and like allowing the transformation, like really, it's not pushing. I don't feel like we should be really pushing for anything, but I do feel like we're all kind of going through a shift. And I think the right headspace to be in is a headspace of like trust and calming and just understanding that everything's going to be all good. Um, but I mean, knowing that we will be going through some sort of transformative moment and it could look different for everybody too. You know, it could show up differently in our life. And like I said, really look at where Gemini is in your chart because that could be a big thing as well. Um, but I think a big spirit message is just to trust the universe and go with the flow. Let me ask what will be a big shadow work theme this season? What's a big shadow work theme we all could benefit from? Oh. Flow, lol. <laughs> so flow is the card we got. Um, so obviously this is saying, you know, just reiterating even more that feeling of flow and like letting... Um, you know, your trust guide you and not really fixating on the issues. So what are your um, views around not even the divine feminine, but just like what, are, how do you view resting? How do you view letting go? Does that make you nervous? Like, do you feel um, like does being out of control make you feel nervous? So I feel like that's going to be a big thing to think about because obviously we want to fully trust in the universe during this time, we're getting all these cards about, um, you know, all this great flowing energy, but, um, you know, if we are having lots of limiting beliefs around um, being relaxed and free and whatnot, then that might not be very great and helpful. So definitely check out your views on relaxation and, you know, letting go of the wheel. Like, how does that make you feel? Really think about those themes this month. Alrighty guys, that concludes our Gemini reading. I hope this was beneficial for you and I hope you have a great Gemini season. Bye guys. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you I hope you liked this video. I hope this helped you um, really get excited for Gemini season. Let me know what you're planning on doing for the season down below. And I love you guys all so, so much and I will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.